Hello everyone. As we dig deeper into the lighting and texturing of our scenes, we soon come across the concept of volumetric lighting. Volumetric lighting is just another way of adding ambience to our scenes via lights. So to do that, we are going to use this simple scene that I have set up here. And this is basically a stage uh, with a stool and a microphone. So I want to add some lighting to this to make it feel like it's a nightclub and there's an actual spotlight on the scene. So to do this, I want to go ahead and make use of my spotlight. So for that, I'm going to go to the rendering shelf and create a spotlight by using this button or go to create light spotlight. So either one of the two is going to get you to the exact same spot. So let's go ahead and create that. And you'll notice that my light is created in the center of the scene as we have seen before. And by the size of that little light, I can tell you that this scene is fairly large. So I want to make sure that I increase the size of the light in order to be able to see it. Now, this is not a photometric light and it's not a uh, uh, or an area light as we saw in class. So the sizing of it should not affect the intensity of the light itself. However, I do want to make sure that I see it. So I want to scale it up a little bit. Let me go ahead and switch my key to the art tool and let me go ahead and change my tool to the move tool. Now, in order to best position this light, I want to make use of the light itself to see the scene through it. So with the light selected, I want to go to the panels under my viewport and go to look through selected. Now with that done, I am seeing the world as the light is seeing it. So as I move and position my light, I am actually making use of the actual light to see the world. And so that looks like a fairly good position for my light that is going to project the light onto the scene. So let me bring it up a little bit and that's good. So now I want to switch back my viewport to the perspective viewport and I want to turn my lights on to see what's going on here. So I'm going to go to lighting and press seven and you can see the spotlight cone. It's been basically placed on the scene. Now, as we saw in class, we can control the size of the cone and we can control the penumbra and all those variables that go along with spotlight. So I want to go with the light selected on my outliner. I want to go to its attributes and I want to decrease the size of the cone slightly so that it's a little bit more focused on the actual stool and the microphone. And I want to increase my penumbra just a little bit so that I get some feathering around it. That done, I want to go ahead and start adding atmospherics to this. So if I were to go ahead and render this in my uh, Arnold renderer, for example, let me go ahead and select Arnold, open Arnold render view, and let me go ahead and run an IPR. Now, if this is running an IPR, you'll notice that I get nothing. And that is because my spotlight intensity is fairly low. That's one thing. The second thing is that the lights, as I explained in class, tend to come in, come in with a no decay decay rate. And remember, this is how light interacts with the distance. So in the real world, we use quadratic decay. That's how light in the real world actually works. So I'm going to switch that to quadratic decay, and then I'm going to increase my intensity significantly. So I'm going to go to something like a thousand just to see what I get. And you'll notice that I start getting you know, some light, but not enough yet. So let's go big. Let's go 15,000. And that seems more like a proper lighting for this scene. So now I have the light projecting into my scene, and but I don't see the atmospherics. So in order to activate the atmospherics, the volumetric lighting, I need to add an environment volume. And you do that under the render settings. So let's squeeze this in here a little bit. And let me go ahead and open up my render settings. And under my Arnold tab, I am uh, Arnold renderer tab, I am going down to environment. So I'm going to go all the way down to environment. And there you will see the atmosphere tab, the atmosphere option, the atmosphere channel. So for this, I want to go ahead and click on the checkerboard and I want to add a map to it under the create atmosphere volume. Once I do that, you see no change here, but you have a new node for atmospheric volume. Now with that, this a, a small change of this value on the density of this value will be a significant change on the scene. So if I go in and change my setting from 0 0.000 to 0 0.001, you will notice a significant change on my scene as soon as I click elsewhere. You see that I get some volume light on it. So going for a value of, let's say, 6 will automatically intensify that. So that means there's more smoke on the scene. There's more particles in my air. 
You will also notice that this is respected by the shadows. So you see that the shadow that is being projected by the stool actually has a reduced amount of atmospherics because there's less light hitting it. And so you control this by creating the, the increasing or decreasing the density of this. You can also change the attenuation of it if you want to, to turn off the volume itself within the light. So you can increase that value or decrease it to control that a little bit more in detail. You also have the ability to add particles or what we would call a gobo uh, onto the light by projecting particles on it. You can do that through the attenuation color channel. So if I click on that checkerboard and say, for example, I enter, I enter a fractal value and then I go ahead and fractal, as you know, just produces light and dark values randomly. Let me go ahead and dig out of this and increase my attenuation. You will notice that a combination of those two things will actually start changing and you'll see some volumetric changes on the actual uh, volume lighting. So there's actual particles of that fractal being placed inside my light, inside the rays of light. So let me go ahead and disconnect that by right clicking and breaking the connection and bringing down my attenuation again, all the way to zero. And as you know, from what I explained in class, samples will inc increase the quality of that render. So you have the ability to control all these things, all these things inside your actual um, scene. Now, for a true gobo experience, where you want to have control of a gobo inside the light, and by the way, the gobo is what I explained in class, that cutout that you can place in front of the light so that it projects through that cutout, you would do a change in the light itself. So let's go ahead and close this for just a second. I want to maintain my volumetric lighting. And what I want to do now is I want to select my spotlight on my outliner. And under the settings for the spotlight, I'm going to scroll down all the way to Arnold. Now, as I've explained all these in class, so you can go ahead and make use of this to uh, set the lighting to exact numbers if you're looking for something specific in your scene. But at the bottom of this, you have an option for adding light filters. Gobos are light filters. So in order to add a light filter, you can go in and click Add, and you will get a window where you will have different options for filters. Some of them have to do with how the light, basically this recreating real life setups on lights. So in this case, I want to go for a gobo and I'll click add. Now the gobo here, it comes with nothing. As you can see, no change happened in my scene. But if I were to go ahead and click on the gobo, double click it to open up its, um, its panel over here, its panel of attributes or its uh, node, then I have the option to go ahead and create slide maps, which means I can enter a file and using the information on that file, I can go ahead and make a selection of a map that I have created before. So for example, I have a Batman map here. There it is. So that's the bat sign. So if I click open on that, you will notice that my light now is projecting the bat sign onto the scene. And I see the proper projection of shadow by the gobo on the volumetric lighting. So this is how you would add that kind of volumetric um, feel to the scene. Now, this doesn't have to be an image. This could be the same way as what we were working with a second ago with attenuation on the light itself. So let's say I want to maintain my full volumetric value like this, and I don't want to change the attenuation the way we did a few minutes ago. Well, let me go ahead and get out of this one, and I'm going to remove the linkage to the slide map. So I'm going to break that connection. And I want to go ahead and use, uh, instead of a map, I want to use fractal. Now you notice that without me changing the attenuation settings on the actual, um, on the node for the volumetric lighting, I was able to introduce that into the light. And I can see the rays of light being affected by the shadows or the dark areas in my fractal. And obviously the fractal being projected onto whatever you would see the spotlight hit in the scene. So this is how you create volumetric lighting in Maya.